Welcome back. Helen, yeah. very soon we'll be talking about mentorship and leadership, yeah? The importance of mentorship. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, I don't know if you noticed, this morning, as I drove down to the studios, I just felt a sense of better security around me. Yeah. I didn't have to look over my shoulders, even mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. points where we had a bit of traffic. What, yes, what yes. do you think is going on? How often are you, in, are you about town? Are you, are you an outing person so I'm much, not, kind of? I'm <laughs> not that much of an outing person. Okay. But, so you're um, not the party in the late night? No, 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 uh, no. So you're no, looking no. at I the think, general. I think I'm a, I'm a retired general. <laughs> <laughs> I spend more time, I spend more time at home. indoors. Mm. But each time I have to go out, sure. you know, it's easier for me now to see any remarkable changes. And what I, I noticed, what I noticed today was that there was a little bit more... I agree with you totally, John. It's not only about today. It's not, today is a weekend, by the way. Um, even the weekdays and even the night, though it's not advisable to be out so late in the night, but Lagos seems to have that sense of, you know, a lot more security than we used to um, feel. Um, you, you, you get out of your house and you are almost like nine out of ten, sure. By the grace of God, that you get home in one piece without any incidents at all. Mm. Though we hear that there are a few flashpoints, um, like yes. the Marina Axis, where the unnecessary build-up of traffic, you know, happens yes. every morning. That's at um, the CMS. At the CMS, mm. yes, at the mm. CMS point. And yes. I think really that what uh, what's what's happening there is the indiscriminate, indiscipline, indiscipline, yes. indiscriminate parking of mm. vehicles. Mm. Along the and it's um, not a new thing because last week I was driving and on traffic radio I heard um, a few people you know calling in to complain about that particular slot mm. um, spot. I'm I am shocked mm. that it's still there mm -hmm. that the authorities haven't taken care of it. Yeah. And another flashpoint that I learned about recently is um, is the Axis the Ikeja on the bridge. Okay, that's you the know, main Awolo Yes, bridge, by the computer yeah. village. Yeah, that if you're driving by there morning, afternoon, night, you yes. must be extra careful with your valuables, you great. know, yes. Great, or, great advice mm, from you. Mm, mm. So uh, I hope our viewers will be careful about those uh, hot spots yeah. here. And sure. uh, well, we hope that we'll all be safe. Mm. We hope that we'll all be safe. Yes. That is it, that's yeah. the word, yeah. Okay, so we're back to the show and this morning we're looking at leadership, arguably. The greatest value in leadership, it's its ability to draw the best out of other people and to inspire them to maximize their potential and that of the resources that they manage. And of course, on the show today, we have three amazing leaders and indeed mentors. Our first guest is Tejiri Jerry Chuno. And with a name, of, a name like that, you I'm sure his it. friends will call him TJ. <laughs> so he's fondly called TJ. He's an idea and brand strategist, a print and publishing consultant, a teen mentor with over 22 years experience, a U.S. family wellness coach, founder, nursing father's community, mm. and managing director, Dot Bob Creative Solutions, and chief consultant, d Centrics. Wow. All I can so say much. is, TJ, welcome to our world. Yes, TJ, <laughs> welcome to our world. And I'm particularly excited about the, you know, the, the father's community, yes. what it's like and mm. what he does with the fathers. Mm. And um, TJ is joining us via Zoom this morning. Is TJ there yet? Yes, please. Good morning, Good morning Jonathan TJ. Galling. You are looking awesome. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, I was about to say that to you as well. You're looking beautiful. I wish I was on set there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, TJ. So, TJ. I want to welcome you to John and Helen, today with John and Helen. Um, going through your profile, I must, I must confess that I am a little bit envious of you. <laughs> and, um, well, with your hands in so many pies, could you just tell us how did you get yourself to this envious situation? I like the way you uh, called it a situation. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> I think it's a good situation. 
Good. I just want to say good morning to uh, every Nigerian, everyone watching, and uh, just say, please keep safe. Um, it was never my dream to, you know, be in this spot, but as life would have it, one event over the other, you know, brought me here. First and foremost, I had amazing parents. I, I would say that I had amazing parents who did their best and bringing me up and the way I should go. And it wasn't an easy one for them because growing up, I was just the Judas, the family with six kids. And I was just the one um, that was off key, off everything. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, my parents uh, are ministers as Christians. Okay. And uh, I did not represent anything they represented growing up. I was just like the opposite. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't fun because my mom took me around every prayer house I can remember in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, there was a serious deliverance that needed to be done on this child, you know. And I love to also tell the story that there were times I had to just fall so that the person praying could leave me mm -hmm. and I could move on with my life. But then, <laughs> as it were, life went on and I started learning along the way um, what I should do with my life. I started seeing the importance of um, what my, the role of my parents in my life. Uh, it helped, God also helped place me amongst uh, amazing friends who, you know, their values started to influence mine. And then it got to the, my own Eureka moment where I know that I had to make sense of my life. At that point, every experience started counting for what I am now and what I do now. And um, I would say, um, Probably that started my journey. At, at 20, I woke up to realize that I didn't have any teenage experience. You know, I could tell, you know, you hear people tell their stories, oh, at 12, I did this, at 13, I did that. Mm -hmm. I think all I did in my teenage age, age was create chaos. Um, I was thinking, what do I tell? <laughs> what do I tell my son? What do I tell my daughter when I, I do have one? Now I have four of them. What do I tell them? You know, there's really no story. So, I, I was led in my heart to start to um, mentor young people so they don't go through the path I went through thinking I was doing something great with my life, not knowing that I was just creating a mess of my life, you know. And then I, I got to also realize that the time I wasted, I couldn't make it. So it's more of catch up, you know, going forward. That also influenced um, um, my getting into teenage mentoring. Also, uh, starting the Nelson Fathers community, um, it was, I was reading a book. We'll get to that. Tejiri, we'll get Sorry? to the Nursing Father community. Because okay, I'm, great, all great. Soaked, I'm all soaked in your story. And it's so inspiring. And I've got goose pimples all over me. Because I want to believe that parents who are listening to you at this point in time, who probably are at the point of giving up on their teens, you know, have heard <laughs> your story and they're encouraged. Seriously. And I'm very, very inspired. Thank you so much for that awesome story. You know, a turnaround, almost a 360 turnaround, you know, for the better. So let's, let's pick it up from there. <clears throat> we often hear, you know, different um, people come up with their different definitions of what mentorship is. At a very young age, 20, you said, you decided to begin to mentor you know, to talk to younger people so that they won't go in the path that you went. Now, what is your experience and definition, your own TJ, of mentorship? Okay, I would, um, I would simply put it this way. Mentorship is an opportunity to extend the essence of your living to impact others around you. I see mentorship first as an opportunity, um, opportunity to mm. let the best of you create the best in others. Mentorship is basically um, providing guide, guidance and all that for people. Um, it's helping direct people, but first is an opportunity to the mentor because one of the things that happen is you live life with a sense of fulfillment when you see others um, live up, not just live up the right values, but um, with the right values, create results that impact humanity positively. So for me, mentorship is um, basically an opportunity to um, expand, amplify um, what you have in you to help others become better. Hmm. That's, that's quite interesting because um, I, was, I actually learned that um, mentorship itself hasn't really been properly defined mm -hmm. yet. 
So thanks so much, TJ, for, for helping us out there, at least your own perspective, and uh, that should really help us. Now, um, I'd want to know what really does one look out for when making a choice of a mentor or a mentee? What do you look out for? Okay, um, now this is a very interesting question because there is really no one size fits all. Um, there are different um, things one could, could find. But I think first and foremost is the value set, the value system of the mentor. If you're looking for a mentor, you need to first look at the value set of the mentor. Um, what are his belief system what does he align to? How flexible is he in listening? What are the results he has created over time? What is the um, length and breadth of his or her um, influence? What's their knowledge? Um, are they able to give you constructive feedback? Are they honest and candid? Um, those are a, a little of the things you look for when looking for a mentor. You also want to look for someone who you can access as well, not someone you can abuse their space because that's one problem a lot of mentees uh, have. They think when you know they call you mentor, they can just bug into your space and uh, uh, have your listening ear 24 hours of the day. Um, one of the things you should also uh, do when looking for a mentor is look for someone I can also add value to. Yes, I would say that. Not just someone who has value, but someone you can also add value to. Now, this is one thing that will help mentees here. I'm going to say this. Every mentor has a need. Every mentor is on a journey. Every mentor is pursuing something. If you can identify that thing, you align with that thing, and you can help the mentor achieve that, you have automatically created um, the access you're looking for to, be, to connect with this mentor and experience uh, on, the, I don't know the words qualified this, but to experience mentorship that goes beyond um, all the do's and don'ts. Because uh, while you are taken, you are also given. You're also given value. It brings you closer to the mentor. So one of the things you should do is look for someone that you can also add value to. Everyone, everyone, and I say that everyone, even the president has um, needs. And if you can solve his or her needs, you have access to him or her, whoever the person is. So those are a few um, qualities of a mentor I, I could mention. Then for mentees, why are looking for mentees? Now speaking to mentors is you want to look for someone who has an open mind, willing to learn. That's key, very important, it's key. A lot of people jump in and what they want is just um, access. Um, I have a, young, a lot of young people who want to just, you know, snap pictures with, uh, popular people, actors, and all that. And at the end of the day, he just goes on social media and you hear them talk like, hey, I know this guy, I know that guy. Yeah. Just a picture. <laughs> and they, are, yeah. they have bragging rights. That's all, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. That's what they want access for. So um, as a mentor, Mentoring you know you don't really have to support and wait, encourage wait, people. Wait. Sorry, please. Go on, go on, go yeah, on. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, as a mentor, you know you also have um, what you're pursuing. You have your goals. And then you, would, you want to invest your time wisely. You want to ensure that the time you're spending, it's adding value. And it means something at the end of the day. So uh, you wouldn't want to give your time to anyone who just wants to be in your space for selfies. Okay, thank you so, so much, TJ. Thank you so much, yes, TJ. Um, you know, before we, we, we got you on the show, John and I were talking about formal or informal kind of... Um, the, or the traditional way of mentoring. And um, we were wondering if there was anything like that, you know, the parents, the, the words, the children kind of training at home. Would you consider that to be a mentorship? Because you answered my next question when you talked about everybody has a need. So the mentor has things that they learn from the mentee and um, vice versa. Um, so this relationship, help me define it. The relationship between the mentor and the mentee, on the one hand, and you know what happens at home, you know, in the family, the father, the mother, the children, the aunties and the uncles' relationship at home. Would you say that's some level of mentoring? 
Yes. Um, mentorship could be conscious and unconscious um, to the mentor or from the mentor. Conscious mentoring is basically when you are engaging with defined goals and then you have a plan or program to help you through the process. Okay. So I mentoring, um, I'm mentoring, for instance, I say I'm mentoring a fee. Mm-hmm. And then this is what I want to achieve with a fee. And this is the time we're going to work on this. And this is our schedule we're going to meet. And uh, I check on him. I follow him through. I get results. I'm able to check maybe what he's doing from time to time. That's conscious or formal mentoring. Now, most parents, now this is, uh, this is um, a little bit two-sided. Most parents mentor their children informally. However, not also rightly because um, your children, you have close contact with your children. You're monitoring them every day. You see what they do. They engage you. They are learning from you, but they are not directly being mentored by sure they are not consciously being mentored by you so they learn of you they don't learn from you learning of you is different from learning of you learning from you is that i am deliberately explaining why my experiences why my actions i can take them through a um, series of questions and they can understand why i do what we can have the conversation but when they're learning of me is that they just see me do a thing and the next day they replicate it it's more like programming them to be to have a, a particular um, value set and you know a behavioral patterns. So um, most parents unconsciously mentor their children, and then their children become their greatest fears because their children learn of them and not from them. We must we must we must take the last question from you. Like in a minute, talk to us about this um, nursing fathers community. In a minute, please. We're almost out of time. Okay, not a problem. Thank you very much. Um, what I did was uh, I had my own, when I was having my last baby, I was not always there for the other kids. I chose to be in this, um, uh, the, the whole process with my wife. I read a book that says, um, just imagine you tying a bag of cement on your stomach. That's almost what it like when women are pregnant. And I was like, OMG. So I was there, you know, careful to see her go through. And when she was giving birth, I was in the hospital. When she did, I, I remember I knelt down. I called my mom and said, Mom, this is what you went through for me. I'm so sorry for all the problem, you know, I've brought to your life. And then um, I chose to be in her. I chose to be in her, in her, I'm sorry, my baby always does this. That's I chose to be in her, uh, in her and the whole process. In the whole process, I got to connect with my baby more than I do with others. I, get, I started learning things, and I realized I was also providing the right support my wife needed. And I started thinking about it. And you moved that from your more, family to the bigger society, to other fathers? Yes. Uh, and from there, you know, I just said, I think fathers need to uh, get more involved. And I started reaching out to fathers who have children from three below. And we now realized that fathers really do want to get involved. Fathers of this day really want to get involved, but they don't really know how to go about it. And so uh, when we get married, we quite frankly, yeah, challenges. We don't know who to talk to. We don't know how to express ourselves. Yeah. So we started this community where we can just, um, we, we let go of what's happening in us. We share, okay. we learn, and then we go back to become better fathers and not just better yeah. fathers as well mm. as better husbands. John, don't we need, don't <laughs> thank we you, need TJ. a lot more Thank, thank you, more thank you so fathers. much. Thank, thank you for you. even demonstrating that <laughs> with the presence of your little baby in the room. <laughs> thank you so much, um, TJ, for that very incisive conversation. And please you, keep up the excellent job, especially with the nursing, nursing fathers community. That interests me, and I hope that at some other point, we will have more time to explore that and find out how successful it has been. Thank you once again, and um, My pleasure. have a lovely day. You too. Thank you. All right. It's um, John? So, yeah. So now that we know that mentorship, uh, you know, across borders is uh, that relationship where mm -hmm a more experienced or more knowledgeable person or a system helps to guide a less experienced and less knowledgeable person. The mentor, of course, as we have gathered, may be older or younger. All right. So at that time again, where we need to take a breather and we think you need one too. So we'll take another break, but please 
don't go away. Join us as we were going to be joined when we return with an amazing woman who is our second guest. Please stay with us. <laughs>